In this video, we're going to have a look at an overview of the edit models feature that you can now do in the Power BI service. We're going to explore some of the capabilities that it offers, as well as some limitations to bear in mind if you're looking to try out this new preview feature. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So the edit model feature is a new feature that came out in April, and it's one of those features that didn't really come as part of the monthly feature update where you typically find what's new in Power BI. I saw a few people within my LinkedIn channels uh, mention it, so I figured I covered it in a video to explore the full capabilities of this new feature. So the edit model is essentially a way for you to edit your models directly within your Power BI service. If you've worked with Power BI before, you'll know that uh, you have some editing capabilities within Power BI service, but most of the time, if you wanted to edit your models, update your relationships, create measures, you won't be able to do it directly in service. You'll need to download the file and open it in Power BI desktop for you to be able to manage those. Now with this new feature, you should be able to edit the model and make those changes for yourself, all within Power BI service. So let me show you. So let's do a quick recap of what the edit feature is in Power BI. So we're going to have a look at one of my reports here, and I'm going to open, on a, let's say, this one. And this is a report that I built for a community challenge. And uh, from here, and as you can see, because I am the owner of this report, I have this option for me available, the edit button. Now, if you click the edit button, you will see that uh, you will have, you know, different controls as you normally would if you're working with RBI desktop. So you can edit things like your report pages, your visuals. Um, you can even have access to your data to drag them in create some new visuals or create some new pages. But what you'll notice is that you don't have access to things like uh, being able to create new measures. You won't, this, you won't be able to do it here. You can't interact with your data model the same way that you would do in Power BI Desktop. So creating new measures or creating you know different tables. But now with this new edit models feature, you will have this option, open data model, which will open up the model for us. So I'm not going to click it there yet and i want to show you first how to enable it so at the moment it's a preview feature so it's by default turned off so you'll need to toggle this uh, manually you'll find the option first to enable it under your workspace under settings under advanced options here if you scroll down, you will see a new option, data model settings. It says um, users can edit data models in the Power BI service. So once you tick that and hit save, you should be pretty much good to go. As you can see, as you saw from the edit within your report, you can hit open model, but you can also open it in different ways. So for example, you might go to your data set. So if you have the iPhone reviews here, you can go to the more options and you will have the option open data model. You also have that option in the data set view itself. So if you open up the, the data, data set, you will have this option open data model here in the ribbon. If you click that, it will look something like this. So here we are in the model view in the Power BI service. So let's have a look and see what is available for us here. So as you can see, um, you have the model view, which gives you a view of all your different tables uh, within your model. You can uh, edit the relationships from here. So you can see like our model. If you double click on the relationships, you have this option to update your relationships, which is great. You can create different uh, layouts, which you can also do in, in Power BI Desktop. It's if you wanted to, to have a look at a few tables only, you can do it here. Now, what's interesting is that um, your layouts won't be saved, so you can create the layout here. Uh, but once you close this uh, window, this won't be saved. So when you open the data model again, uh, this layout, even though you've created them, it, it, won't, it won't be saved. Another thing to take a note of is that any changes that you make to your model right here will be automatically saved. So there's no undo button. Um, so unlike in Power BI desktop. So just keep that in mind if you're updating your models here in the Power BI service. There are a few things that you will not be able to see here. So 
So for example, uh, at the moment we're looking at the model view, but there's no way for you to preview the actual data view, which is the, the table view of your data, which is pretty handy if you wanted to know what, what data is in your tables, for example, but you don't have the ability to do that in this view. You also don't have the report view, which is typical because obviously the uh, the report and the data set is uh, two separate entities in the service. So you will be able to view all the changes that you made here in the report view if you open the edit on, on the other report instead of this data set. On the right hand side, you can see that you have access to all of your tables, measures and calculations within your data model. You, you can see that you have some measures here and all the measures that you have all of your tables you can create new calculations here um, either from here you can you can create uh, new measures new columns uh, as you can see here all of your calculations you have access to their DAX um, calculations so how they are written and you can create them for yourself as well which is really handy that you could not do before the only thing is that what I notice is that you can only create DAX calculations so you can you can create measures columns and tables as you have here as options on the top left, but you can't create, let's say a empty table that is not DAX for let's say creating a measure table, for example, you can't do that. Uh, you have some other options here. You're able to update the properties of your values. So if you needed to, to update the calculations like your, your measures, you can update how they're grouped, uh, different values like you like you normally would in Power BI desktop. You also have a few other options here, like being able to manage the role level security directly here. So you can uh, define your security roles, create the filters, and then assign them later in, in Power BI service. If you don't know what RLS is, I did cover it already in a previous video. So have a look if you haven't yet. You can also create new reports uh, on top of this data set, which you could already do anyway. Let's have a try. One interesting thing that I saw is when you create a new measure. So I'm just going to create a new measure here and I'm going to create a, a fake measure error. And I'm going to say for this measure, I want it to be one plus a. Now, if you create a measure like this, you're adding up, you know, two different values that have uh, different data types, it will usually result result in an error. So it will show like a little alert. But in, in this preview, it doesn't, which is a little bit alarming, because it means that you you don't really have a way to validate your measures if they are working or not, unless you start using them in the report view. Because every change that you make here, auto saves, that means that if you open up your report view for that same report, your measure that you've just created should be automatically available within your report view to use. So I'm going to open up the same report, except we're going to go to the report view now. And I'm going to hit edit. And then I'm going to create a new page here. And uh, let's have a look at the measure that I've just created. I think I just named it error, right? Yeah. So you'll see that now that measure is available to us. Now, if you drag it into a page here, you'll see that it errors out, which is as we expect. And that's because that calculation is not valid. So that's one thing to bear in mind if you're using uh, this feature is that it doesn't let you do the validation like you normally would in Power BI Desktop. Now, because this is a preview feature, there will be a lot of limitations. And uh, I'm not saying that it doesn't have a, a future, but at the moment, these, these are some of the things that you should be thinking about if you're planning to use this as part of your development process. So as you notice uh, within our measures, you can rename, you can delete your, your measures as you please. However, that doesn't work for columns or tables that are not created in DAX. So here, for example, helping in our grouping, if you right click, you won't have those options and the way to rename those columns would be grayed out as well. So um, you can update their properties, but not renaming or deleting them. Another limitation to this is that obviously, because now it's within the Power BI service, you won't have access to uh, using external th tools like DAX Studio or Tabular Editor, which are quite key components that speeds up your development process, or it just simply gives you more access to the data model, like 
you know, object level uh, security or other properties that are not on the front end side of Power BI. Accessibility is also a little bit limited. So for example, if you're used to using keyboard shortcuts or, you know, tab orderings or, or tab navigation that is not available within the, uh, this view, it also doesn't support all types of data sets. So if you have data sets that are, let's say using incremental refresh or any data sets that have uh, live connections, you won't be able to use the open uh, model feature like I am doing right now. And another thing is that uh, because it's a preview feature and it just came out, it might not be available for your tenant. So you might not have that tick box option available for you. Um, it's only for certain regions and uh, mostly for premium users. So here is a full list of all the different regions that are not currently supported. Luckily, I think because I am using it in my premium workspace, it works for me, um, but I'm assuming in the future, these uh, regions will also be enabled for uh, with this feature. There are lots of limitations and it sounds like this video is a bit of a downer, but the reason why I'm covering this is because it, the potential that it could do and change how you develop uh, Power BI reports. Now that you are able to edit models within your service, that means that as this feature progresses and matures, the more capabilities that uh, you will have in the service, which might give an alternative for report developers to make reports directly within the Power BI service, as opposed to using Power BI desktop, which is a, a great feature from my perspective. There are other limitations and other features that I might not have covered in this video. So I'll leave a link to the full blog posts uh, outlining everything that is uh, available in this feature in the description box below. So have a read to see what else is there and if you're interested in trying it out. And that's really it for this video. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so not to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.